Good afternoon. I'm going to talk. I wanted to talk to you today about railroad spikes. There's a lot to go over here on a railroad spike. Um, these spikes that you see here are uh, these brand new spikes. This is how they come in these small buckets. Now there's 50 in a bucket. We used to get the big containers had about 200 of them in. But uh, they no longer sell them. They use they uh, sell them in these small buckets. Same way with the bolts. They no longer come in the big buckets. But uh, a railroad spike is uh, six and an eighth inch high. Um, it's inch and a quarter wide across this way, and about an inch and a half this way. Okay, the uh, Railroad spike was actually invented around 1830 by a gentleman by the name of uh, Robert Livingston Stevens. He was uh, then president of the uh, Camden and Amboy Railroad. And back then, the spike wasn't, wasn't the same. They, uh, the head wasn't quite as big. It was uh, kind of like knocked off here. This part what didn't, didn't exist on the spike back then. But uh, back then they spiked the uh, rail right down to the ties. The tie plates didn't come in until about uh, 1900. Um, parts of the spike, with the chisel head, or the chisel tip, I'm sorry. This is your shank, and this is your spike head. And these are called cut spikes. They're square so they don't uh, turn in the tie. Okay. Um, they're made out of low carbon steel. The rail in, is actually harder than that. And uh, there is, there's about, depending on the tie spacing, there's somewhere between 12,500 and 12,000 700 spikes per mile um, So that's a lot of spikes and uh, I want to tell you about uh, Some other things here this uh, This spike here It's not called anything special, but what happened to why it's bent It was underneath a bolt on a joint and when I pulled it out. I've got to pull it out uh, at an angle underneath so it was like this and and if the uh, bolt was right here over top of it I can't pull it straight up I got to pull it out at an angle so that's why that's bent this particular spike here I found it in the trash bin you see that indentation this is called a cut throat spike and what's happened is this particular spike is pulled up and the uh, abrasive action of the train going over and the tie plate wearing back and forth back and forth back and forth has what has caused uh, that to happen so uh, <coughs> way back they used to make uh, the uh, company called the Greer Railroad Spike Company uh, used to make what was called a double headed spike and that was used mostly on the uh, some of the narrow gauge tracks, especially the uh, Rio Grande Southern. So you have to look on the internet for a picture of that. I obviously don't have it. That was way back in the late 1800s for that. But they do have some pictures of the double-headed spike. It's also called a Greer spike or a Jeffrey spike, named after the company. Um, here's another special type of spike that they make also. I don't have any of those, but they're called frost spikes. And sometimes they'll put a frost shim under these tie plates. So that spike will actually be about uh, seven inches high. Okay. Um, another type of spike they make, and I don't have any of those, it's called a lag spike or a screw spike. And they're rounded. So you have a tie plate here. This is where that uh, would go in. We actually don't have any of those where we would use them on this rail. 
I don't know if you can see that. This tie plate's made in 1936. It's an old one, an oldie but goodie. <laughs> but uh, we don't, I don't know, we, we uh, have bought and used tie plates in the past. And uh, that's one of the tie plates that came in on that. Um, some of you guys had asked in the past, this is a, this is a spike and maul. This is what spike and maul looks like. I've got a fiberglass handle on here, which is nice. It doesn't break as easily as wooden, wooden handles. And uh, it uh, absorbs a little bit more of the shock when you, when you spike it. There's a, than a wooden handle does too. So I like the fiberglass ones, but uh, that's what a spike and maul looks like. Come over here and show you another thing. Um, if I was going to use a spike and maul, if I wanted to drive this uh, in, inside spikes here, I would be standing on the outside of the rail. And uh, there's an art to it, and I can't spike and hold this phone at the same time or I'd do it for you. But you kind of don't come all the way back with your back after you hit it. You uh, actually hit the spike, twist your wrists, and come down again. So it's uh, what they used to call Gandhi dancers. <laughs> but uh, let me show you something else. This is my claw bar. And uh, so I was going to pull a spike. What I'll do, I'll get the uh, claw bar under here like this. Now, here's something for if you guys are just or not, you never ever pull this back into you. You always get on the side and grab it here with both hands about three quarters of the way up where this is here. Um, we can also, I can also use this as a nipping bar, but uh, and you push down like this, both hands. That uh, keeps that bar from coming into you if it slips. Now sometimes, uh, I don't know if you see that or the shade's getting you, but uh, sometimes you can't get it under there. So we'll hit the hit this bar right there with a spiking maul. That'll drive that claw bar up on there and help to loosen that up. And uh, we've even had some spikes get down in there, and you can't even get them started with the claw bar. So what we do is we'll hit them with a spiking maul and drive them down, actually. And uh, when we do that, we, we say we're waking the spike up. And almost always, they'll uh, then you get drive your claw bar on there, and they'll come out. Okay? Um, here's another thing. I pull that spike out, and uh, I made a hole. I don't drive a new spike into that hole. What I'll do, I'll use a... Uh, we used to have plugs. Uh, creosoted plugs we drove down in there. I don't have any of those because we haven't used them for years. But now we have uh, what's called Sure Spike. And Sure Spike, I dropped like a gunpowder, it's real granulated. And, the, and you fill the hole up with that Sure Spike. And uh, that seals the hole. And it also uh, um, makes a real good. Uh, grip for the new spike being drove down in so the water doesn't get down in the ties you can imagine if water got down in that tie it's not going to be very long before uh, that tie starts to rot from the inside out now here's another little tool and uh, this is a special tool special kind of a claw bar pull spikes and uh, some of our railroad tools have some rather colorful names this little guy here has been called a dog's dick it's also been called a preacher and it's also been called a roadmaster and I don't know why they call them all this stuff but uh, 
that's what they would do but this is special um see this frog guard rail now, i've got a spike down in there on the inside right here's a spike you can see that so what i'll do i'll get down here with this and then these things here i'll be able to get my claw bar under there and uh, pull that up out with my claw bar getting the leverage off of here so there's obviously no way i can get a, a claw bar in there so the, that's what i'll use this uh, little specialty tool for and that's about the only application down there uh when it's real close to the switch i might have to use it but uh Something, a couple other things here I wanted to show you about spikes. Wow, I, we're talking about spikes, and uh, it's called the spike pattern. First off, the outside spike, this is your, your rail's going to lay in here. This is your outside, and this is your inside, your gauge side. This would be your field side. So the spike pattern, this is your uh, anchor spike. We don't put anchor spikes on the gauge side we don't do it and uh, this would be called your rail holding spike so in tangent track this would be the spike pattern okay anchor across from your rail holding and then your other rail holding um, that's all you need in a tangent track once we get into curve what we usually do We'll put the uh, two rail holding spikes on the inside. So that would be the spike pattern for a, uh, a curve. And uh, some of the sharper degree curves and bridges, we use different tie plates too. They're longer. Um, I'll have to talk about tie plates too. So I'm going to do another video in the future on that. So I got you the spike pattern and... Uh, um, something else I wanted to tell you, and I'm trying to think of what it was. Oh, yeah. This is important. The spikes, everybody kind of seems to think, holds the rail down in place. And uh, that's not necessarily true. Well, it is to some degree, but the very main purpose of the spikes is to hold the track gauge. Okay. That's the biggest purpose of the spikes, is to hold the track gauge. Um, something else I wanted to show you, and I'm thinking of it too. Um, told you they were square, so they don't turn. Okay. Oh, yeah. Here. Here we go. Yeah. Look at this. See how that's made? All right. There's a certain way you, you drive spikes in too um, let me show you why I used to drive nails way back and I always drove them in at an angle well do you see how that fits in there right against the rail okay that's straight the spike straight up and down now, if I drive it at an angle, what's going to happen? I'm not going to get near the amount of holding power. Obviously, if I drive it at this angle, I'm not either. This is incorrect. So, spikes are driven straight down for a reason. That's the way they're cut, and that's the way they uh, go in there. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, very good. All about spikes today. <laughs> All kinds of stuff about railroad people don't realize. And uh, that's why I make these videos. I really enjoy making these videos. And uh, I get a lot of good comments. And I think you guys uh, enjoy watching them. Seeing all this uh, different aspects of railroading that uh, don't normally get to see or know about. Who, who, who would have realized there's spike patterns and, and those spikes got to be driven the way they are and sure spike and spiking malls and claw bars and welcome to my world. 
<laughs> Welcome to my world. All right, thank you for watching, and uh, have a really good day.